I know that I'm nothing short of a miracle. Let me start at the beginning. When I was first diagnosed with cancer, in March, I was told that it was lymphoma, not lung cancer, even though it originated in the lungs. That made it much more treatable and curable. Whew, that sounded great. What they didn't tell me was that every time I went to the, in, the, in for chemotherapy, within a few days, I would end up in the hospital with an infection or pneumonia. Each time was worse than the last. I had four out of six scheduled treatments. When the last, when the infection happened the last time, it was very, very serious. It was then I let them know, not that I was able to talk, but I did let them know, no more, no more ventilators, no more shots, no more anything. If I die, then God will get all the glory. If I don't die, then God will get all the glory then too. But I'm done. Whatever God wants to do with me is fine, but I personally am done. After that, the doctors told my family I was going to die at least five times. It was so horrible. I don't remember too much about that time. I was kind of out of it. I do know the nurses were wonderful, taking such good care of me and my family. My decision to, let the, to not let the doctors do anything else for me did two things. In one respect, I was finally getting some peace, which I really needed. Also, it brought me much closer to what God's plan was for me. Since I wasn't being treated for anything, the doctors decided I needed to go home. They put me in hospice care, which, which just means that they wouldn't treat me for anything other than the pain that I feel, that I feel so I feel comfortable when I died. <clears throat> when I got home, I couldn't do anything for myself. Nothing. I couldn't even lift my head up. I couldn't feed myself. Nothing at all. Nothing whatsoever. I was just totally out of it. <clears throat> that was when God stepped in. Jim was wonderful. Being there all the time. My sister Sarah and Cindy were also there a lot. Sarah brought brought her with her, her prayers and her oils and moral support and she remembered things for me. Cindy brought me food which I desperately needed <coughs> and her drive for me to get better. She had me up and doing my exercises all the time and her memories and her prayers also. <coughs> and the rest of my family and friends were there too. Too many of them to, 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 to actually name. Everyone came to give Jim some, some much needed breaks. Most of all, God was there. I knew he was there because he brought me a sense of strength and power and peace. And a little bit of, of a sense of why he saved me. Part of why he saved me was to give me a testimony of what he was capable of, of and what he, what he has done for me. And Pastor Scott and Lori have been encouraging me to get my testimony together. God seriously has brought me out of a pit and into, into, <coughs> into light again. He did it once, he's done it twice now. <coughs> I was just about dead for the, I was just about dead. For all intents and purposes, I was dead. The doctors had given up on me. They had done all that they could do, but they did not know God or what he could do. Remember, when I got out of the hospital, I really couldn't do anything at all. As you can see now, God is healing me, really. Most of the time, it seems way too slow. That's my problem, not, not God's. No more am I in hospice care. I am instead on the road to recovery. I am in, in remission. That means that they cannot find any cancer at all, anywhere. Thank you so much for all of your thoughts and your prayers, your visits and your meals and your cards. Because of your concern, God came and brought me out, brought me his gift of hope. I'm so much better than I was. I'm not as good as I'm going to be. I'm getting stronger every day. And next year my testimony will be so much better. Praise God and be all the glory.